Hi everyone, I'm Nigel Poulton. Welcome to this week's episode of Kubernetes Moment. Okay, so this week we've got William Morgan with us. William is at Buoyant, but most importantly, William is like massively involved with Linkd in the service mesh space. So welcome, William. Thank you. So got a load of kind of, well, there's loads of buzz going on around service mesh at the moment. We're here at KubeCon 2019 in San Diego. Um, and I think it's fair to say probably for the last few KubeCons, service mesh has been the big thing. Feels actually to me like now it's starting to gain real traction and momentum and things like that. Yep. Um, just talking about service mesh in general first, then we'll talk quickly about Linkerd. Um, what do you see as being like the um, game changing feature? I know like service mesh does you know, several things, but for you, does one of those things stand out? Yeah, so the service mesh features are all things that we've had in the past, right? Retries and timeouts and TLS and, and, and observability features are all things that we've been able to implement in the past. The thing that the service mesh does that makes it unique and interesting and valuable is where it places that functionality. Okay. And it places it in the hands of the platform owners, the same team that is operating Kubernetes and the service mesh that's building the internal platform for the rest of the organization places it in their hands in a way that they control it and they own it, and it takes it out of the hands of the developers, so you decouple those two teams. So in that view, it's almost more of a, a solution to a socio-technical problem than yep. a solution to a technical problem. And do you think by placing it there, um, it increases the chances of adoption of these types of things? Not Maybe adoption's not the best word, but like, let's take security or retries and things like that. By putting it um, at like the, for want of a better term, like maybe uh, the service or the network level, the fabric level, instead of having every developer say, you've got to code your own security, yeah. is that going to uh, like speed up the, the adoption or the deployment of all this yeah. great stuff? No, that's exactly right. So one of the earliest experiences we had with Linkerd, and you know, we came into this as engineers, so we were like, this, this seems so crazy to us, but we had a very large organization that was deploying it because it, they had to get TLS between all their services on Kubernetes, and they were faced with talking to hundreds of developer teams, because they had hundreds of services, and asking each of them to put this TLS item on their roadmap and fighting yeah. with the product managers, and like, you know, that and that seemed like this impossible task. When they added Linkerd, they could do it at the level of the infrastructure, and it was suddenly something that they owned, that they had control over. It was solving a goal that they had, yeah. right, in a way that decoupled them from any dependency on the rest of the organization. So that was the real value. It's not that TLS itself is a new thing. No, no. Right? It's that they end up, the platform team ends up with the control. Would it be fair to say, and tell me if you don't think it is right, but I remember in the early days with Docker, it felt like Docker brought, they didn't invent containers, um, but they brought containers to the masses, made them available to mere mortals like me, right? And do we think that service mesh, I'll just give you an example, right? Whenever I think of security and minting certificates and things like that, like the color drains from my face and I'm just <laughs> like, it's, it's not fun for me. Yeah. Um, so do you think service mesh will make that um, more accessible to more people? Oh yeah, so this is a big goal for us in Linkerd. So in fact, in Linkerd, the moment that you install Linkerd and you add the data plate to your service, we turn mutual TLS on by default for all HTTP traffic, right. which means zero config, right? So the moment you turn this thing on, you get security. Right. And that's really important because security is one of those things where, like you say, it's really boring, it's complicated, well, boring to some. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> complicated, it's scary, and the more barriers you place in front of it, the less it gets used. Yeah. Right? But for me, when I'm surfing Reddit and looking at cat green lock icon yeah, yeah, in my yeah. browser, and I yeah. haven't had to do any work to get an encrypted connection where sure. I validate the identity, so why should, why should my services that are running on Kubernetes be any different? Yeah. Right? That's, they're potentially passing healthcare data around or PCI data. You know, th these are important things, so we want to give you security by default. Yeah. And obviously, the service mesh is not a complete security solution, but we can do a lot of that work for you in a way that yeah. doesn't require you to have to do work to get it. Okay, cool. So let's talk about Linkerd at the moment then. Um, what's the big um, value prop for Linkerd as a service mesh then? Yeah, so our focus is in being the smallest, lightest weight service mesh and we tie very heavily to kubernetes and we're very focused on the operational surface area mm -hmm. so once you've adopted kubernetes which is a 
huge API surface area and is very complex, right? For better or for worse, you then have to add the service mesh on top of that, right? Yeah. And that can either be like a really complex thing that has a whole lot of giant operational surface area that you then have to add, or it can be really thin and it can be a small, small, small. That's, yeah. so that's our goal with Linkerd, to make it lightweight, really fast, and minimize the configuration surface area and the operational burden 